and welcome to day two of the cake dream to cake base challenge i'm so excited that you are here today and that you decided to show up for yourself um i can really see you're committed to your personal growth we did day one yesterday where we spoke about money mindset so today we are doing day two and we will be talking about your money story and uh, i have my notes down here don't mind me looking down it's just my way of um actually um going down into my notes so that I can remain relevant and stick to the topic at hand. So I'm really, really thrilled that you guys are here. Um, this challenge is designed for you to really push yourself in your cake business to either start a cake business or to grow a cake business um, during these difficult times. And it's designed for you to build resilience throughout the pandemic and to come out stronger after COVID-19. Um, you know, as an entrepreneur, to really just stay and stick through these difficult times, um, um, you know, wherever you may might be in the world. I know you guys are coming from different countries. Um, I'm, of course, in Vantuk, Namibia. Um, so if you've not met yet, my name is Esther the Cake Queen. I help overwhelmed and passionate cakers transition into um, owners of profitable and rewarding cake businesses so that is what i do if you are new to my community welcome a warm welcome um if you've not joined the cake dream to cake biz uh, uh, group make sure that you do if you've not signed up for the challenge also make sure that you sign up for the challenge because i'm sending each and every one of you guys a workbook um so far 200 over 200 of you have already registered for the challenge it is not too late remember their prices up for grabs it is not too late for you to win those prizes after each day's training what i do is i give a homework activity you need to complete that homework activity Remember, there is a post um, uh, inside, uh, there's a video inside the Cake Dream to Cake Base group. Um, it is the first video where I explain to you guys how to take part in the challenge. Tag your accountability partner. If you've not partnered up, find that post and tag your accountability partner. Um, just write the letter at uh, the symbol at and then type in the person's name and then Facebook will immediately show that person's name click on it and then post your homework activity that way your accountability partner will know when you are doing homework accountability partners are there to support you to complete your homework exercises you guys can team up talk to one another um, communicate message one another um, and see if you are completing this exercise just holding each other accountable and what a friendly and good way to also make friends with other cakers inside our community really just to get to know one another and to connect on a personal level so i've um i've actually made an opportunity for you guys to partner up with accountability partners and to get to know one another in the group this is all about community it's all about supporting one another it's all about coming together and learning so that we can grow together so um I'm not really going to go back on day one. If you've not watched day one, uh, make sure that you pause this, go back to day one and watch it before you watch day two. Also, be reminded to complete your homework activity for each day. You have the weekend to catch up and to complete all the exercises to actually qualify for the prizes. Remember, I will be announcing the prizes tomorrow. So just to set the tone for today and to continue being relevant i want to really recap just a little bit highlight some of the key points from yesterday yesterday's exercise was all about money mindset and we were talking about your mindset in terms of money and that was an exercise that i gave you the training was really just to create an awareness to bring to your mind um to create um those to bring up those brain waves that are um causing you to step back in your finances uh, causing you to not take hold of opportunities in your life so we defined money mindset we said what it was we said why it's important to have a positive money mindset we mentioned why it's what a negative money mindset can do to you and to your personal business uh, to your personal growth and to your business um, just some of the things we mentioned yesterday and of course we gave a homework activity I gave you guys a homework activity um, make sure you are taking notes in your 
Cake Dream to Cake Biz workbook. I have given you a workbook, four page workbook. Today's workbook is also there. Um, I mean, today's activity is also inside the workbook. So make a reflection on that, take hold of the workbook and really take those notes. It's really going to help you. Everything you are doing in this Cake Dream to Cake Biz challenge is designed in a way to actually help you craft a strategy. So what you are doing in the homework exercises is you are crafting your own um, strategy for success. You are helping yourself to step up um, to the plate. You are helping yourself to step up in business and to grow. So, you know, what a better way to take notes. What a better way. And I love taking notes. I love jotting things down. I love journaling. It's my way of reflection. Um, and if I have to look back at that in the future, um, it just shows me how much I have grown or how much I have made um, progress in whatever it is that I've journaled or written down so it's really important that we write things down um, so yeah as I mentioned yesterday's exercise was also or yesterday's training was also designed to um, basically help you to identify what abundance is what an abundance mindset is in terms of your personal finances and what scarcity is so just really go back and reflect I'm sure you will learn a lot um, we also mentioned that some of the money blocks that you might have in your life would be um, things like you might have a fear of spending um, because of things you went through. You might just be, uh, you might just be afraid of spending money. Um, past events that have happened to you, um, you might think that this restaurant is so expensive and so it's only for so and so. You you don't want to go into that restaurant. Um, you know, uh, it's just some of the things we mentioned yesterday. You might say that you can't go shop at a certain place because of A, B, C. So these are some of the money blocks. Make sure you tag your accountability partner when you respond to that homework activity. Um, and that is what I like to do uh, for my clients as well. I like to, uh, just like the exercise we did yesterday, I like to help my clients overcome their money blocks, their money hurdles, those that are in my paid programs. Um, I want them to be in a position where they're in a positive frame of mind to be able to make correct decisions in their lives. So it's very, very, very important that as an entrepreneur, you overcome money blocks because um, if you are an entrepreneur, you are there for gain. We are serving, we are creating products. Products, we are creating services we are creating and designing solutions to the world and um, we are doing this because we know that our niches are profitable um, and um, you know once those profits are rolling in you want to hold yourself accountable you want to prepare yourself as an individual to be able to manage those resources that your business is collecting the people that you're working with um, the financial resources that your business is generating you want to be in a positive state of mind so that you are able to you know take good care of all that because um, that is how we grow if we don't take care of the resources that our businesses are generating if we don't take care of the relationships that are around us then it's really a challenge um, it, it, it will really be a bottleneck in our growth so what we want to do is be in a positive frame, frame of mind so that we are able to control and to to manage our resources so just a recap of um some of what we did yesterday um so that you can really follow through today so remember that uh you need to complete all four days of the um um the challenge um day one two three uh through to day four um and then we have a master class on the 27th of um, July in that masterclass we will be teaching I'll be delivering or um, bringing to you my five secrets for getting returning clients in your cake business and I'll be um, sharing some myths and facts about the baking industry and how you can grow and start or scale your cake business I'm super excited for that um, that's where I will be announcing the winners for this challenge and I have a super important prize I'm um, also um, um, on on, on um, the masterclass day, I will be announcing a very, very special prize for someone that is attending that um, masterclass. So remember that um, this is all happening. This is for you. It's designed for you. Um, if you are watching on replay, just keep, um, um, just keep ahead a little bit so that you can... Uh,
tap into the content for day two. So today we are talking about our money story. So um, guys, everybody has a money story. You have a money story, I have a money story, everybody has a money story. And your money story is basically that um, event. It can be a one-time event or it can be a series of events. It could be different things that happened in different seasons of your life, different areas of your life that have shaped basically your experiences, that have shaped the way you think, look, feel about money. Yesterday I mentioned to you guys that... Um, if you have a positive money mindset, you will feel good and you will make better decisions for yourself and for your business. So today we are talking about your money story. What are those incidences that happened in your life that are framing your money mindset or that have um, affected your money mindset? What are those things that happened in your life that are actually... Um, defining your financial decisions that are overriding your financial decisions. So what is the story behind your financial decisions? So we spoke about the blocks. Now let's look into the story. What is it? What happened to you? Um, what happened to you positively? What happened to you negatively? That you're making these decisions, that you think about money the way you do. So I want to bring to you some of the five, top five um um, you know, money stories that come up in our lives. It can be from our childhood. It could be from our workplaces. It can just be, remember your money story is your experience around money and because of this thing that happened to you or because of this frame of mind, you have decided to make a certain decision. So the first one that I will share with you is rich people are evil, right? Rich people are evil. So... Uh, maybe in your upbringing, you know, it has been brought down on you that rich people are evil and if you have money, you are evil. So, is that perhaps a reason why you think about money the way you do today? Do you believe that rich people are evil? That all rich people are evil? You know, or that money makes people evil? So, that mindset, when it's especially brought up into us in at a childhood stage, can really frame us when we grow up. Maybe we believe that rich people are evil um, and that all rich people are bad. But is that really true? Um, do you really believe that every person out there that is wealthy um, is having an evil intention? Every person out there that is wealthy is negative or bad? Um, I remember, um, I think it was Dan Locke mentioning that if rich people were really evil, why then are we not having the type of crime that we see in, um, I don't want to really put it out, I need to look at a way that I need to mention this, but he mentioned this and, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing him, I'm not quoting him. He mentioned that the type of crimes that we see in rich suburbs, for example, is not there in suburbs that are not so wealthy, in communities that are not so wealthy. And I'm not for rich people and against people that are not wealthy um, or the other way around. I want to be in a position where I'm objective and I'm bringing this to you from that perspective. But would you... Um, pass that message down to your children that if you are wealthy, you are a bad person and so you should not be wealthy. Or would you rather pass down a message that be wealthy and still be good? Which one would be positive? So that could be one of the reasons that you perhaps feel that you don't deserve to have a certain amount of money. Um, that you don't deserve to price your cakes in a certain way. Um, and it's very disheartening that, you know, sometimes cakers themselves don't believe in the quality of their work. And because, not to say that you want to be rich from your cakes, but you want to be in a positive frame of mind for your business so that you are able to generate the income that you need to sustain your life. Because business is there to support you and the business itself, right? So, it's very disheartening to see that cakers, for example, put in so much work, talent and skill, and they still 
while producing a luxury good and that is a whole different topic cakes are luxury goods it's like Gucci it's like any luxury good it's like Lamborghini it's a luxury item you know if you don't want a luxury cake just go in the grocery store and buy it because you don't want that you come here to us right so in spite of that luxury item cakes feel like they should not be charging their worth so is it perhaps because of your money story that you are not charging your worth right so these are some of the things that we need to look into okay so let's go into the second um you know story that is most common which would be work hard to earn big maybe you've been told that um, growing up or you know even in life maybe you've picked up that you need to work hard in uh, in order to earn a living right you need to toil you need to sweat you need to work hard um, you need to drill and grind to actually make a living um, and is that really true you know um, you know it's not always that you need to grind and work hard to earn a living or to you know go through in life right to have a day-to-day -day means um, you know sometimes there are other sources and means of income there's there are passive streams of income like um, there's income streams that come in be not because you've already worked hard and grind on it maybe there's an inheritance that you have somewhere maybe you've invested in shares and you know today's world is you know so complex and there's so many different opportunities available to us out there um, maybe you can take an investment take a certain amount of money and put it away in shares or maybe you can make an investment that can give you passive streams of income whereby you can get recurring revenue like on a monthly basis or on an annual basis and that could be your means um, that could be your source of income right so you know it could that is also I believe that that is also a negative money mindset because it's not always that you need to grind and grill and work hard and sweat to make a living and to get by. You know, we just have to be innovative. We just have to, yes, there are times when we need to, when we need to toil and work hard, but we don't have to work hard and grind and sweat and, you know, run all our lives in order to make a living and to make ends meet, you know. Um, so that is just a frame of mind that we have and if we believe that then that is how we will live but if we believe that there are smart ways of generating income generating revenue then we will walk into those and those opportunities will come to us um yesterday i mentioned how god has placed enough resources for us all on this world for our existence and for our living for our being and for our sustenance um, and I believe that, I really truly believe that everybody has that opportunity to tap into those, um, those, you know, into, into those potentials and opportunities. So if you have a negative frame of mind, your resources will not channel themselves to you. But if you tap into a positive money mindset, please go back and watch yesterday's um, training, then it's very easy for you to tap into those opportunities. So that is number two that you need to work hard to earn big you know or you need to work hard to make a living you know um, another negative um, story could be too much money makes a person evil right um, and we are talking about money right here so I'm sorry if you are not a person that talks about money this might be offensive to you but I believe that as entrepreneurs we need to speak about money because it's something that is a bird it's like not a burden but it's something that is a hurdle in our path to success if we don't overcome these money blocks and fears then we will not live the life that we desire we will not tap into the opportunities that we need to tap into in order to live our fullest highest um, to be our fullest and to be our highest selves you know 
we will not be able to exist at a place where we need to and where we desire to. And we need to be there in order to serve others. We need to be there so that we can meet those needs that are not met. We need to be there so that we can create those services and products that are not out there in the world. We need to be at that place, at our highest place, so that we are able to serve more, right? Um... So I don't think that too much money makes a person evil. It's your set of mind, it's your state of mind and your principles and your values that would either make you to be a person that is not morally right or just or I don't know how to say it. Um, so yeah, that's another one. Too much money makes you evil. So another one, especially in the African cultures, is that just enough you just need enough to get by right um, certain people will say well and I'm not advocating for being rich please don't get me wrong I'm advocating for a positive money mindset right so some people will say I don't need all that right I just need a roof over my head and food on my table but that is not true. You need fuel in your car. You need a car like if you are in this modern day and age, you need a car to get around because transportation is key. You need to get from one place to another. And um, I did economics as my, as my major, right, at varsity. So we classify transport as a need, as a necessity. So transport how you see it obviously based on how you see it you might say that oh i can get around i can get by with a cab right someone else might say i can get by with my own car i need my own car to get by i need to drop my kids off so that is not to say that you are prideful it's a need we classify transport in economics we trust uh sorry classify transport as as a basic need right as a need yes so you need transport whether it's a car or public transport you need transport right and um, so if someone says they need a car that is a need it's not a want it's a need right so some people might say i just need a roof over my head food on my table to get by but that is not true you need transport you need education for your kids there's so much stuff you need around you to get by you need security you need friendships you need to be well. Um, so these are things that you need to get by. So maybe you have a negative money mindset that says, I just need this to get by. And sometimes we mention those things to show that or to prove or to, to perhaps, um, I don't know, sort of like from a place of humility. But I don't think that is humility. Um, true humility is knowing where you need to be and when you need to be there, right? Um, not denying your needs, not denying what you want, okay? So, yeah, um, it's not humility to say that you need something, that you don't need something while you do, right? So, as I mentioned, um, that could be a negative money story that you just need enough to get by. Because that is really, in essence, it's not true. If you really look at all the things you need, you need a list of things to get by. Security, shelter, education, you need a list of things to get by, right? Okay, so we have then come to the end of our training for day two. I hope you enjoyed your training. I hope that this was really useful for you. Um, so with that, let me leave you with your homework exercise. Your homework exercise is to identify what your money story is right now. Looking back at your past, looking into your present and into your future, what are those things that have defined your money story? Look at your current projection, your current way of life and identify just one story from your past, from your childhood, from your present or from your future, even maybe COVID-19 has probably defined your money story, okay? So what is your money story and how has that money story defined you? How has it changed you? How has it made you change your view? And if this training for today was useful at all, let me know in the comments with an emoji or with a comment. Just let me know it was useful or 
it was not useful that is absolutely fine i accept positive criticism so let me know if this training was useful at all to you and if you will be able to implement it in your business and i'll see you tomorrow